Many people find their first view through the eyepiece of a telescope to be breathtaking, especially if they're looking at Saturn, that ringed jewel of the, of the night sky. It rivals probably looking at the ocean for the first time or, or rivals looking at a mountain for the first time. And it shows us the majesty of God. And I don't know if I've done it very well, but in today's nature clip, I'm going to attempt to look through the night sky and show you, as I see it, the majesty of God. And after just a moment, we'll click back on talk about the majesty of God for a moment, because this is um, the weekly devotion of the Littleton United Methodist Church. Hi everyone, we're going to do something just a little bit differently today. I've had a, a marvelous time, a, a lot of fun in the book of Proverbs. We're going to kind of drift a little away from that and do something else next week and I'll tell you about it just a little bit later in this devotion. Before I do that, I and before I leave wisdom literature, I want to pick up a, a piece of wisdom literature that isn't from Christianity at all. It's from ancient China, the Tao Te Ching. And the very first saying in the Tao Te Ching goes something like this. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. Or if we were looking at Protestant theology, um, we might say, if you can describe God, that's not God. That is, God is bigger than our box. And anyone that thinks they have a handle on all that is God, they, uh, they don't. Either their God is too small or their imagination is not big enough. I'm reminded of Moses on the mountain of the Lord tending his father-in-law's sheep when he sees this bush that is burning but not being consumed and goes over and, and God calls him to a life of leadership and service and to set God's people free. Moses is worried and he and afraid of how people will accept this. And he, he asks for a description, a name of God, something he can use so people will understand what he's saying and who, who is talking to him and commanding them. And, and all God says is for a name, he gives them a name that's, that's kind of loosely translated, I am. Moses, you just go tell them, I am has sent you. Or we might say, I am who I am. Or I will be who I will be. But basically just, I'm outside your box. I, I just am. Stephen is preaching or giving an account of his faith right before he's stoned to death. And he gives this account and says this in Acts chapter 7, beginning with verse 48. But the Most High God doesn't live in houses made by humans. It is just as the prophet said when he spoke for the Lord, heaven is my throne 
and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? In what place will I rest? I have made everything. That is, God does not live in buildings, in houses made by human hands, and God doesn't live in boxes made by human imagination. Now, that's certainly not because we don't try to build boxes to box God in. We try to, to build boxes and framework to understand everything, pretty much. And usually we personify just about everything. We, we make it look a lot like us. If you have a lot of dogs or cats around the house, you pretty much think that, I mean, you may not, but a lot of people pretty much put human traits, personify their pets. They, they see these little dogs that live with them as extensions of humans. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I mean, I don't know to what extent um, dogs are similar to humans. Now, we could go to stuffed toys. <laughs> Those aren't similar to humans in any sort of way, except we put little smiley faces on them and little eyes on them, and, and we carry stuffed toys around and dolls around and things like that and make, make them into humans. And we watch on TV shows, we, the animals talk, and we, may, we personify those, and it's just, just who we are. It's an extension of ourselves, but we do the same thing with God. Sometimes we make God look an awful lot like us. So let's say um, for devotions today, just to kind of get our imaginations around this and God being bigger than our box. Let's take a look at the universe, the Milky Way, the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all of that. And let's say, what kind of God would create this? How would God create this? What, what would a God that could hold all of this in his hand look like? Or probably not really have a hand, would he? So let's just kind of ponder that a while and let your imagination kind of grow and try to imagine a God outside of our box. As always, this is Wednesday, and we have a few days left to, to navigate through this week uh, before we come back together again to worship on Sunday. So between now and Sunday, in the last few days of this week, let me just leave you with this thought. I may not be able to describe carefully the God, the majesty of the God that created this whole universe. He may be so far outside my box that I can't even fathom. And, and all of my deepest theological ideas may be nothing more than child's play. It may be that the greatest theologians on this planet right now are theologically not much deeper than two children playing in a sand pile. But I do know this, and take comfort in going to the rest of the week, that this God of majesty and glory knows you. And what's more, cares about you. Before I leave, I have a couple of announcements for today. The first, dealing with our midweek, our Wednesday videos, our devotions. Starting this coming week, we're going to be doing a Tuesday night series at the church small group series, anyone is invited to it. It's going to be at 6.30 on Tuesday evenings. We're going to have snacks. We're going to look at critical thinking for Christians, dealing with some of the hardest issues in society around us today and how to cut through all of the muck and the mire and, and see more clearly. Now, it's not, a, a, it's not a class of indoctrination. It's not a class of you have to be have this view or a, a class you have to have that view, but rather just how to think critically. It's something very much needed. 
Now, because of that, some of the people that watch these videos regularly every week, they live out of state. Some of them live outside of our community, outside of our area. Some go to different churches. And several have mentioned, or you know, a person or two has mentioned, that they would like to be able to still know a little bit about what we're doing on Tuesday evenings, even though they can't be there on Tuesday evenings. So we're going to switch these devotions. They're going to be the same sort of thing. I'm going to do a nature clip, and, uh, just a short little devotion, but, but we're going to focus on the topic that we were talking about the night before. So if you are coming on Tuesday evenings, the Wednesday devotion will just add a little bit to that. If you're not able to come on Tuesday evenings, the Wednesday devotion will kind of keep you in touch with what we're doing, and we can have online discussions. And in May, I passed around some, um, passed out in the bulletins, some index cards. And the back of the index cards, I had you write um, questions for the pastor. So I've got uh, 20 or so cards, so I may not make it through them all. But what we're going to be doing on um, the Sundays throughout part of this summer, a big hunk of it, and maybe leading into fall, is looking at some of these issues. Because uh, it seems to me like sometimes we preachers get up in the pulpit week after week and answer questions that nobody's asking, while we miss questions that people really ask. So. I just encourage you, if you are part of our regular church congregation on Sundays, every week's going to be a little bit different. They're all going to be dealing with tough issues and questions that have been turned in. People asking me, what do I think? And, and, and what I think may not be right sometimes because uh, it may be too tough of a question for me to answer too. Well, come in and see. But that's a couple of changes coming up into the summer.